in the event something horrible would happen, and he ended up being president. I mean, not not through the usual pr procedure, but the un the unusual. Um, if, if you got that three o'clock in the morning call, I mean, whatever it may be, whether it's uh, some country being actively hostile against Israel or something, uh, what's the process? What is sort of, how would you go about, what's the first thing you do when you get that three o'clock phone call? You assemble your national security team right then, and of course, everybody is always going to be standing by, ready to assist. But you do not blink when you have to make a decision right. to defend the home front, to defend American lives. And um, that is, of course, the top of any president and, and vice presidential team's agenda is to protect American people. So in not blinking there, you in assembling your team and your advisors, you make the right call and you make sure that Americans are protected. When you talk to uh, Senator McCain, is it mostly about strategy or are you talking big picture right now? Uh, both, both, but um, not so much strategy about the campaign at all because uh, we both are so confident that we are on, on the right path and in these final days of the campaign, we're acknowledging that people are understanding the stark contrast between the two tickets, and, and that's good. This is this is the place we need to be right here, still as a bit of an underdog in these last few days, but realizing that Americans are really starting to hear what our opponents are talking about when they talk about spreading the wealth, taking more from our small businesses and from our families, and then redistributing the other people's hard-earned money according to a politician's priorities. That that is, that is not good for this uniquely American pro- entrepreneurial system that we have that has allowed our country to be the greatest country on earth we realize that more and more Americans are, are starting to, to, to see the light there and understand the contrast and um, we talk a lot about okay we're confident that we're gonna win on Tuesday so from there those first hundred days how are we gonna kick in the plan that will get this economy back on the right track and really shore up the strategies that we need over in Iraq and Iran to win these wars now today I don't know if you know governor uh, Richardson uh, said $120,000 uh, was the middle class cut off. I don't know, is that a gaff or do you think that's their position? Because oh. big difference, I mean, we can all do gaffs. Right. You know, we're all guilty of those now. No, it's, I don't think it's a gaff. What, it, it's confirmation that it's, it's been, a, I think, a phony economic plan released by Barack Obama that at first, remember, it was $250,000 and you're not going to be hit with a, a tax increase. Then it dropped down to, what, two hundred, and now uh, from Joe Biden. Biden, his his acknowledgement, and now all the way down to 120. I think it was that, that we've heard today, 120, 150. Um, before you know it, we're going to be back down to that that annual income of $42,000 a year that Barack Obama has already supported, seeing increased taxes on people, hardworking American uh, individuals making just $42,000 a year. It's been, I think, a phony plan in these terms. He has not been candid with the electorate in in terms of what the details are in his economic plan until Joe the plumber finally got him to say what in plain language are your intentions for these higher taxes and of course he says uh, essentially is to spread the wealth she tough Todd she's tough I've learned to, to just get out of her way when she's on a mission <laughs> is she tough is she the disciplinarian do you know what that means? No. <laughs> yeah, is, she, is she boss? Is she boss? I don't know who's really the boss when it comes to making sure you're doing your homework and brushing your teeth. Who's the boss? You. Oh, I thought you were going to say him. Okay, we're a team on that one. What, by the way, what do you want to do when you grow up? Have you thought about it? Um, what do you I think you want to be, darling? hit us uh, so heavily in the last month or so as a topic. The thing that uh, grabbed people's attention was illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that, was the, that was the big problem for a long time. What, what's your thought on that? And what's, how do we fix the, uh, the we, illegal immigration issue in this country? we got to secure the borders. And, and uh, we can't be considering this, this um, broad range of amnesty that some would want. We've got we've to secure the borders and prove to the American people that the federal government is serious about this. And it's got to be a comprehensive approach to dealing with the immigration challenge that we have. Securing the borders, working with our border governors and mayors, they're there on the front lines understanding what some of
some of the solutions can be if only they have an administration who will work with them. And McCain has a great comprehensive approach that he wants to take to this. It includes dealing humanely too with the 12 or 13 million illegal immigrants that we have today also. But until we secure the borders, I don't think Americans are even going to believe that uh, we're serious about um, fixing some of the problems that are just inherent with uh, this, this challenge of so many illegal immigrants here. Now, unfortunately, with McCain supporting proposals for this comprehensive approach to fixing problems there, there were about five poison pill amendments provided in the comprehensive approach that McCain wanted. And Barack Obama voted for those poison pills, killed the whole initiative, and we still have the problem that we have today. Illegal immigration, though, is a perfect example of how these parties had better start working together, the D's and the R's, get it together if they're serious about addressing the problem of illegal immigration. It's not a Republican or a Democrat problem. It's it's all of America's issue. What's the single, in your mind, the single most important reason not to vote for the Democratic ticket? Oh, there, there are two. I can't, I can't ratchet it down to, to one. Okay, so, give me the two. Okay, on the two. On the economic front, they are going to, I believe they're going to put this nation on a course that will erode the work ethic and the entrepreneurial spirit that has grown this country into the greatest country on earth. Because their idea of taking more from our families and more for government from our small businesses will, will kill job creation opportunities and it will kill that, that idea that you will be rewarded for your, your hard work ethic and um, unfortunately that kills opportunity too for us to be generous and compassionate with our fellow Americans. Uh, the Democrats, it seem, in on this ticket anyway, as led by Barack Obama, seems to want government to mandate that we be generous and compassionate with one another via spreading the wealth. That that is not the American way. We, we don't need to go down that road. John McCain has a better idea, and that's spreading opportunity by allowing our businesses to keep more of what they earn and produce so that they can hire more people, grow the economy that way, provide more for their employees, but not have government mandated. And then on the national security front, hands down, no question, John McCain has got to be our next commander in chief. He knows how to win a war. He knew the strategy that was needed there to get us victory within sight in Iraq. He'll know what to do there also as we deal with the horrendous problems that, that are erupting in the areas around Afghanistan also. He's, he's paid the price. He's been tested. He is not one to invite this international crisis that Joe Biden is promising will happen if Barack Obama is elected. On national security issues, it's got to be John McCain as our commander in chief. Chad, what's the reason to vote for your wife? What's your, why are you going to vote for her? Why? Because, um, you know, Senator McCain and Sarah, it, it, they're so much alike, it's almost scary. I mean, the first time that we met the McCains and, and uh, spent a few hours on the road and, and they just feed off each other and they, they just understand what government's role is and that's what makes them just a great team. We understand what government's role is in that it, 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 the American people should not feel that they are working for their government. Government needs to be working for the American people and government has a limited role in, in terms of um, providing tools, infrastructure tools for our families, for our businesses, and then kind of getting out of the way and letting our families and our businesses grow and thrive and, and prosper. We put we put our faith in the American people. We don't put our faith in growing bigger government. And that too is as opposed to um, Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Now we're not voting for the spouse, we're voting for the candidate, but I'm curious, what do we know about Todd? Oh my gosh, he is some, um, he is just this, all around, hardworking, good dad. I don't know if people realize what a good dad he is. He, he's, he has his hands full, of course, when he gets off the slope or off the commercial fishing waters. He pretty much takes over a lot of the household duties and um, allows me to uh, do what I got to do there as governor of Alaska. And it's a busy job, and I anticipate we get to look forward to that also, right? Working there in, in the White House. He He's quite humble and unpretentious and um, it very, very confident and secure in who he is. Maybe this kind of role would, would bother some other guys, but Todd's like, hey, we're a team, we're a partner. I couldn't do this without him. Gonna win Tuesday? I think we are. I believe we are. I 
think the momentum is on our side. Again, we're hitting our stride and um, the campaign itself and the message gathering that second wind that is needed right at this most appropriate time. I see nothing but good things in store on November 4th. Piper, if you could vote, who are you going to vote for? Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.